branding comes from, you know, livestock, you know, it's when farmers used to literally burn an identifying mark into the hide of their cattle and say, that's my cow. And so over and over again, people have got to see the same brand, the same story, the same logo over and over and over again. And that's how you get traction. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's those stories that keep you from sounding just like everybody else. Um, it's your ideas, your expertise, your reputation, and yes, your personality. Even nonprofits have a personality about them. And so you've got to double down on that. Welcome, everyone, to the Development Effectiveness Strategies and the Jim and Java program. I'm delighted today to have personal brand strategist Mike Kim on our show. Mike is the host of the Top Ranked podcast brand you he's also the new york times and wall street journal best-selling author of you are the brand and mike is not only a friend but also a coach and counselor and uh mike is going to bring some tremendous material to us today plus stay tuned towards the end because mike is going to Give us some bonus materials, plus he's also going to share with us a little bit about his personal life. So we just appreciate so much of being here, and we'll give it to Mike. Jim, thank you for having me, for everyone tuning in. I hope to add some value to you today. It's an honor to be here. I'd love for you to tell our viewers what your story is. Yeah, um, I, I today what I do is I, I advise uh business owners on how to market themselves. You know, I think as business leaders, business owners, sometimes the hardest person to talk about is, is ourself. And the hardest thing to do is explain what we really do. Um, but before I got into this, I was, I had spent most of my young adult life in vocational ministry. Uh, I was the music director for a church outside of Hartford, Connecticut for a number of years. And I learned a lot of the things that I learned about marketing in, in that role. Um, kind of albeit like accidentally. And eventually I kind of found my way into marketing and into branding. A lot of those skills and experiences carried over from the work that I did uh, in church. But I think deeper than that, what I've always really enjoyed doing was uh, helping people tell stories. And um, I took a marketing position for a number of years and then launched out on my own. And uh, it's been incredible to kind of see um, what my life has become. And I think ultimately, I just looking back, I realized like life is too short for the wrong career. And that's how I've ended up where I am today. Wow. Uh, your new book, You Are the Brand, uh, is, is, it's just a tremendous book. I can't uh, say enough about how, how enjoyed it. I, I, you know, went through with a highlighter and it seemed like most of the book is, is highlighted important. What did you hope to accomplish and, and, and have come across to your readers? Yeah, there's, well, to the readers, I just wanted to, to be a very practical book, easy to read, actionable, easy to reference, because it's not a book that I wanted someone to read in one shot and never read again, because, you know, blueprints are not like that. You have to keep referring back to it. And building a personal brand and a business around your personal brand what I mean by a personal brand is your personal brand is an identity comprised of your ideas, your expertise, your reputation, and your personality. It's all these things. And so I wanted to kind of give my readers a blueprint of how I built my brand and I've, how I've built other people's personal brands. Our channel is made up a lot of nonprofit organization, nonprofit leaders. What's the, what would you say are the importance for a nonprofit leader of communicating from a branding issue, your story. Well, stories keep you from being blender gray. And, uh, you know, wh- what I mean by blender gray is I, when I was a kid, my mom got caught up into the juice man, juicer craze. She was juicing everything, right? And uh, she bought this juicer and threw everything in it. And it just became this indistinguishable blend of brown gray stuff. And it tasted awful. Like, seriously, it was awful. I mean, I, I know it's nutritious, but you couldn't tell what was in there. You know, beets, carrots, apples, celery, moss from the backyard. I, I literally couldn't tell. And um, I'm sure there was good stuff inside. I'm sure it was nutritious. It, I just couldn't tell what it was. It didn't stand out in any way. And 
unfortunately, that's how a lot of organizations and, and people and businesses market themselves. It's indistinguishable. And they're trying to come up with some clever or slogan or some design. And that's not what really sets you apart, especially as a nonprofit. Um, it's the story behind the founder and behind the organization. I say that there are three stories that we all need to be able to tell. The first is the founder story. The second is the organization story. And the third is the transformation story. So the founder story is why you even care about this issue, how you got into it. The deeper questions to find and dig through that, and these are kind of emotional questions, are what pisses you off and what breaks your heart? Like, why do you care about human trafficking? Why do you care about clean water in a village? Why do you care about, you know, um, standing up for, for, for those who are marginalized? Like, where does that come from? Now, then you have an organization story. How did the organization start? Where did that come from? Because those are two different things. As much as Jeff Bezos and Amazon are synonymous, they're two different entities. So you've got to be able to tell that story. And with the organization story, you're simply asking yourself, what is the big problem the organization is trying to solve? You know, when did it start? And what's the big problem it's trying to solve? Then third, the, the transformation story is the life that has been impacted or the lives that have been impacted as a result of your work. And you can see here that many organizations only have like one or two of those three stories. You need all three. You need to tell them over and over and over again. That is branding. If I'm an organization feeling that I'm the best kept secret out there, um, you would say you really need to step out and create that identity, something that separates you from everybody else. Is that right? Yeah. And it's not like you're trying to be willingly different. I'm not talking about being gimmicky. I'm talking about just being yourself and sharing your, your actual story. Like what happened? It doesn't need to be a, uh, you know, a light from heaven type of moment. Sometimes it's as simple as like, I, I, I was watching a video and it totally inspired me to take action. Uh, recently I interviewed a friend named James Harrington uh, he has, for the last 14 years, run a nonprofit called the Ugandan Water Project. 14 years is a long time for a nonprofit of his size. They've stayed in the game. And I asked him, uh, how did you start this organization? Where did this come from? Because I know where you live. You've never been to Uganda, dude. Like, what happened? And he said, I crashed a barbecue one day, and there was a guy from Uganda at the barbecue, at my friend's barbecue. And he told me about what was going on there. And it just really spoke to me. This guy was telling me about the felt needs and um, why people do not have clean water and how so much of life revolves around the problems caused by that issue. And he said, it just made me think differently about my life. And this guy lives in the middle of nowhere, upstate New York. Within the next year, he had started the Ugandan Water Project and was taking people over there to build these water filters. James has never been in want of clean water. He's never, he's, there's just nothing especially specifically remarkable about why Uganda and what not, why not some other country. It's just he met a guy at a barbecue. But he tells that story and it gives context to why he does what he does. And all these years later, he's still just as passionate about it because he's met people on the ground. He's like, no, we are focused on this one thing because this changes so many other things. If we get people fresh water, it changes everything else that they can do. And so he's found his role. He's found his niche and he's told his story. And it's not remarkable. He's a remarkable guy. He talked to some guy at a, at a friend's barbecue and that's how it started. And a lot of people have had fresh water as a result of it. The mission of our channel is to help nonprofits increase income and become fully funded. And I was recently, you had me as part of your fully funded conference, and you have a real heart for nonprofits and developing the resources for them. What suggestions, what are lessons that you've learned, Mike, over the years that you'd impart to our viewers uh, from the standpoint of fundraising, fundraising, development? I would say, you know, the, the, the word marketing gets a bad rap. And, and I fully understand why I, I really do. But what I try to do is I try to help people reframe what marketing is. And in a business sense, I'll, I'll, I'll say it like this. Marketing isn't about closing a sale. It's about opening a relationship. 
if you really think about everything that we need to do as communicators, as promoters, if you will, of a certain cause, we're trying to raise awareness about issues. You can't just beat people over the head with it. <laughs> you have to be able to open a relationship with them. There's a process, no like trust, try, give, repeat, refer. That's what people do. If they don't know about you, they don't even have a chance to like you. So if you're not sharing your organization's story or the drive behind it, um, you've already lost before you begin, right? If they know you, though, they have a chance to like you. And if they like you, they'll have a chance to trust you. And if they trust you, they'll try you out. They'll kind of come to a presentation. They'll hear your pitch. If they like that, they'll give. And if you continue to earn their, their trust, they'll repeat give, and then they'll refer you to others. Know, like, trust, try, give, repeat, refer. And yet so many of us in our messaging start right at give. Give now. Give today. Give, please. Why aren't you giving? And you, they've skipped all the previous steps, which are their responsibilities, our responsibility to provide those steps. No, like, trust, try. Mm. And if you don't do that, you've closed off the relationship. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's funny that we're talking today. Okay, we, we, Jim, you asked me about this right before we started the interview. I went on a date last night. First date. Okay, I, I can't believe how many people on social media are giving me dating advice. It's crazy. I posted on Instagram. I was like, I'm going to meet this girl for the first time. We had a great time. Stand out like, you know, hours. There's a second date. I didn't ask her to marry me. I didn't. <laughs> and yet that's what people do when it comes to fundraising or branding or marketing or asking, oh, we had, well, we had a great dinner together at our fundraising gala. Can you please buy us a ring? Doesn't work. Too soon. And yeah. like, I, I feel like 90% of my, yeah, 90% of my job is just trying to remind people that we have to use common sense. Right. And, you know, it's funny. Um, there's a lot of parallels to this because like, you know, I texted her this morning. I said, Hey, I had a great time yesterday. Um, hope you have a good day at work. If I was a nonprofit, I'd ghost her for a month. I, I just wouldn't text her, wouldn't email her, wouldn't ping her, wouldn't ask her out again for a month. And then a month later, Hey, Heidi, how are you doing? <laughs> hope you've been well. Want to grab dinner? She'd be like, who the heck are you? You jerk. Like you ghost me for a month. <laughs> Yet that's what we do. That's the role of social media. If there's consistent communication over time, it's better than intensity. It's, if I don't talk to her for a month and I call her in a month and say, hey, you want to go on a three-day vacation to like Hawaii or something like that? You want to go? She'd be like, are you crazy? You psycho. And yet that's what we do. I'm just trying to put this in real life terms. You're right. Well, well Mike, tell us, uh, you you provide so many resources that you and you help so many up businesses, you help nonprofits, you help individuals. Um, what's what are some of the resources that our viewers could take advantage of even as early as today that you you offer? Yeah, if you um, like books, uh, that's a natural place to start with my book. You are the brand. Mm -hmm. It's really all about the storytelling and the, the messaging and the identity that we've talked a little bit about today. And that can help nonprofits. It can help uh, nonprofit leaders. Um, I've talked in the book quite a bit about my friend, Mary Valoni. She and I started a training company several years ago, helping nonprofit leaders tell their story. So there's a lot of parallels in there. Um, we have a podcast together called Fully Funded the fully funded podcast that Mary and I do together. Uh, that's done really well over the years. And she's a fundraising consultant and I'm a marketing consultant. So we're sort of like peanut butter and jelly. We just kind of come together. Um, and Jim, you've been on our summits and our podcast before. So that's, that's really cool. It's just been cool to see this out there. I would say this though, that good communication will never be bad for your organization <laughs> or for your cause. It will never be bad. It's, it's a, it has a domino effect. It's a multiplier if you will, you get good at this one thing, it will make everything else you do thereafter much, much easier. Um, I have a podcast it's called You Are The Brand. I have a YouTube channel called You Are The Brand. It's a little bit more focused on the business space, but those are some great resources. But I would say start for eight bucks with the book. You know, it's on Kindle for like under $8, I think right now. 
Um, and that's a great place to start. We'll have the audiobook coming out in a few weeks, uh, I think, if Amazon actually does what they say what they will. And um, it, that's an easy, easy place to start. I've got a ton of free content out there, but those are the places to start. Well, Mike, any uh, any parting comments that you would leave with our, our viewers? Uh... Relationships are rocket ships. That's the bottom line. You know, it's it, everything else that we do. Like pe people are starving for genuine connection. Mm -hmm. They're not looking for, for, for perfection. We tend to overemphasize perfection and underestimate connection. It's the other way around relationships are rocket ships. And so just focus on that. Take the same common sense approach that you would towards your partner, your spouse, your kids, and have that same approach with your donors mm. and with the people that you serve and you'll be in good shape. So thank you again so much. Thank you, Sim. Thanks thank for having me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that broadcast with Mike Kim. Mike gave us some incredibly insightful comments, and you can see why he is considered the best personal branding expert. And if you enjoyed this broadcast, please give it a thumbs up and uh, drop some things in the comment section that you especially enjoyed. I hope that you will continue to join us on these broadcasts. If you aren't already a subscriber, please uh, subscribe to this channel and be sure to click the bell so that you can be notified of future broadcasts. If you have any comments or questions, please do so on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. Also, if you need to reach me, you can do so on Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. If you need to reach me through Gmail, please do so at development effectiveness m at gmail.com and as we always say we are here to help you increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded thank you